Oh, um, hi, Matty. Um, what time is it? It's the time. Um, I believe it's time to meet the host. When you're in lockdown, you're feeling gross. You're so bored, you look like you've seen a ghost. It's time to do that thing you love the most. That's right, it's time to meet the host. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Host with me, the host, Rob, and him, the host, Matty. Um, Meet the Host is part of the wider Monday Music Mayhem empire, um, which uh, features me, the host, Rob, and him, the host, Matty, um, and slowly building a conglomerate with me, the host, Matty, and him, the host, Rob, and we'll be taking over the airwaves on Mondays on YouTube at 6 p.m. But for now, it's time to meet the host. So this is part of a mini series where me and Matty have conversations about music and how music has shaped us and how we have shaped music. Um, some Sometimes we shape music like this and sometimes like this. Sometimes the angles are acute, sometimes obtuse, uh, which is what I'm being right now. So without further ado, today's question is... Matty, what's the favourite gig of yours that you can recall in your brain today? The favourite gig? Um, it is. It's Radiohead when they headline Glastonbury. That's honestly the only time I've cried at a gig, I believe. <laughs> it, was, nice. it was that good. Yeah. I was at that gig. Um, mm. It was 2016? 17? It's before we probably knew each other. Yeah. I think it was 17, actually, um, if my memory serves me well. Um, and yeah, it was magical, a truly visual and audio, audio, audio sonic. Sonic, sonic, that's sonic, better. Audible, they're the same. You've done better than me. Yeah, it was so good. I just didn't expect it. Um, I don't know, I've never been to Glastonbury before. And then, like, the whole experience of going there is very surreal, I think. <laughs> There's so many people going everywhere all the time. It feels a bit like you're in a simulation. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's definitely, like, no other place that I've ever been. Um, I, I think of it as, like, a British Vegas. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because, like, that sheer amount of people and that sheer amount of activity, like, mm. in any other scenario, in any other setting, I think I'd find it, like, completely overwhelming. But there's just um, there's a, a genuine feeling of kind of community amongst like all of that chaos. So you kind of feel safe in a weird way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's weird because you could just wake up at any time in the night and the same amount of people, which is probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, are going in the same direction at all time. They're just different people. It's the most I ever feel like a salmon. Yeah. Um. Good. You're just following like a school of fish around, but um, yeah, I think like there's um, I think there's like 170,000 people or something go to Glastonbury. I remember speaking to um somebody who was a steward there, um, uh, when we were in a queue to to get out of one of the car parks one of the years that I was there, and he was saying that the um site is 42 square miles all around, which is ridiculous isn't it it is and I, I swear i've walked around it whilst i was there but then like you do it again you'd be like i did not walk around it <laughs> yeah there's so many places that i've yet to go and there are so many kind of secret parts of the festival that i've yet to discover and um, they're all just kind of whisperings amongst people um mm. my favorite of which being the idea that there's this secret jazz piano bar have you heard this tale i've not but i feel like i should have heard this tale Apparently, somewhere um, near, I think, the healing fields of Glastonbury, there's mm. a, a hill um, which has a crawl space in it behind, like, 
behind a bush of some description. And if you go through this crawl space in the hill, inside the hill, according to legend, there is a jazz piano bar. I love that. It's that cool, is... isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to find it next time. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. But yeah, the very when Radiohead were playing, I, I I'm a big Radiohead fan, um, and it was just incredible. It was just the best sort of performance of anything I think I've ever seen. Like, the music was amazing, the visuals are amazing, the fact you're in this massive crowd for this thing you've been looking forward to for months, it all just builds up, and it's it was yeah, it was a brilliant day. I think like one of my favorite things about Radiohead Live is that their records are so complex and there's so much going on but mm. they they don't um they don't use backing tracks at all I, I i think there's like one or two songs off the most recent album where there's a lot of string arrangement stuff that they do have on a track but apart from that everything that you hear is being produced by one of the band members on stage and it's not like they get like you know three or four extra band members wheeled out for big gigs like a lot of acts do which of course there's nothing wrong with but um yeah it's just it, it's quite cool how they just do all of that stuff and some of it's bonkers like you know playing a uh, radio you know like tuning into just an fm radio and sending it through a load of guitar pedals and stuff like that like live could go so colossally wrong <laughs> um and there's so, so much tuned into the radio stations like oh, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean like you get to a big production gig like that and you know there's so much riding on it a, a lot of people i think would shy away from doing the the super techie super complicated stuff and they just think oh well we'll just we'll just play it from a laptop and play along to it or whatever but um yeah not not radio ed so no they're purists mm. what would you say your your favorite gig is that you've been to i struggle with this um question it's hard um because a lot of the gigs that i've really enjoyed have been in different scenarios i've had i've had amazing festival kind of gigs that i've been at um there's like really small gigs that i've i've watched where there's been like five people in a venue but the band are still given you know a performance deserving of, of a Wembley Stadium crowd and then there's also been kind of quite big venue shows where you get to watch a band for you know two hours or whatever really indulgently go through their back catalogue um, but I think um, in recent memory my favourite show was I went to see Bonnie Iver at the Blackpool Opera House oh, um, really? which was great I went with Ollie from Mouskins and we uh, we got the train that took about three and a half hours from Leeds to get to Blackpool. Uh, and we stayed in a really, really um, sketchy B&B by the sea that was like £20 a night for the room. Um, and yeah, we we went to watch Bonnie Vare in this old um, kind of theatre space that had been there for, I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred years. Um and it, it was again, it was one like probably one of the only times where our gigs moved me to tears. So I remember just feeling so overwhelmed by what was happening in front of me that I just couldn't contain it. And um it's a nice feeling, isn't it, when you moved physically to that and level of emotion. An overwhelming thing. I think because there's so much that music can do for expression that you can't really get out of just talking sometimes. It is kind of a weird thing when you're like, whoa. <laughs> I'm feeling so much sort of like euphoria, but also it's just entertainment. <laughs> it feels so natural as well. It's yeah, yeah it's a weird thing. Um, and especially I think at the moment, considering what's happening in the world and how meeting, you know, a big community of people all there to just witness the spectacle of a live musical performance is just not possible. Mm. It kind of makes you ache for that moment even more, that kind of, really visceral um release of, of emotions um mm. and it kind of makes you appreciate it even more just knowing that you're not able to go and do it uh, i think the memories become more important and you know it, it's making me really smile looking back on those two shows um mm. but yeah it's uh it's pretty wild 
it's, yeah it's weird i think the weirdest thing i see at the minute is when there's like videos in thailand or the country where festivals are going ahead and it's just like ah, oh, it feels so wrong because you because it's all the lockdown and all these restrictions have kind of just happened and we've adapted to them i think it's easy to kind of think this is what's happening now and not think this is what we're missing out on mm. it's quite hard to see those videos and be like ah oh, my summer's ruined <laughs> sooner or later it's coming back <laughs> well hopefully the ruined summers of all the viewers of monday music mayhem are in some way less ruined by the existence of these short videos um and in order to keep this in the category of a short video <laughs> you probably better wrap, wrap up what has been a very enjoyable conversation yeah i think that's a good idea can you just give me a quick um quick time check before we before we finish quick time check yeah let me just get that Ooh, it's coming up to time where we meet the host thanks for watching see you next time when you're in lockdown you're feeling gross you're so bored you look like you've seen a ghost it's time to do that thing you love the most that's right it's time to meet the host Thank <laughs> you.